Hi, welcome to Rotner Rebo. I'm here with Sandra Solomon Fragrance. Yes, hello. Uh, I invited you here today because I want you to rank uh, some of my latest uh, fragrance purchases. Wow, this is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, so you already, I believe you have been with me when I opened them up. Yes. Uh, during some of my fragrance haul, I'm going to link to some of those above. Um, but we didn't rank them no. and we didn't try them properly. So in this video, we are going to go through eight of some of my latest purchases. Yes. So without further ado, let's get busy. So the first one is Dandy Me from Paco Rabanne. I'm yeah. going to link to my video above. Uh, I was the first one on YouTube to review this one and I just love it. Yeah, this is, I already know that this is going to be so hard because I am going to want to put every one of these on first mm. base. So this is, the, this is a matter of who is the best of the best. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, this is so lovely. It's so sweet, but yet masculine. I would wear it myself. Mm. But on a man, this is just amazing. Mm. Yes. And do you feel like, uh, on a man, do you feel that, like it's, uh, is it just good? Is, is it classy? Is it sexy? Is it classy and sexy? It's classy, it's sexy, and it's unexpected. Mm. And it's, <clears throat> it oozes of confidence. Nice. So yeah. how are you going to rate this one from one to 10? Actually a 10, because it's very different from all of your other fragrances. I love it. Yes. And I love Dandy Me, and I am happy that you enjoyed it as well. Uh, please do check out my review of it, where I recommended it to you guys. Uh, so yeah, that was Paco Rabanne's Dandy Me. Next up, we have Bentley for Men Absolute. It was about time uh, that I bought this one, because I pretty much have all of them uh, except or Silver Lake. Um, this one, when we when we tried it during my fragrance haul, both of us felt that it was sort of a classy for men, nice, but none of us were blown away. No. How do you feel about it now? Uh, and my expectations on this one are so high because I love Bentley for men and Bentley for men intense, uh, but there's something in this that a Just little bit puts it. me off ah. uh, and it has that i don't know what kind of note it is but i have said it before it smells a little bit like bacon mm -hmm. and i can't really put my nose on to what me it's it is. sort of a super woody but yeah yeah um so yeah we don't have to to spend too much time no. on it since you don't like it so how are you going to rate bentley for men absolute one from ten um one to ten A five or a six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's decent. not bad, bad. It's decent. Yeah, uh, it's just not as good as the others. Okay, okay. Moving on. Next up, we have No Limits from Philip Klein. Yes, and who doesn't like some leather? Yeah, this is leather. Mm. This is leather and cardamom, and it's wonderful. I love this one. Mm. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> So I said, I love this one, and you asked me if I like it. No, I don't like it. I love it. <laughs> uh, so do you think this is a leather for a younger man, an older man, for any man? Is it super sexy? Is I it just masculine? How do you feel about it? It's super masculine. It's for any man. Mm. And it's especially perfect on a man with a leather jacket. Mm. And a man with some attitude. Whoa, yeah, so okay, nice. This is not, uh, I mean, it works with a suit, but this is not the perfect fragrance for a suit mm. type of occasion. Okay. Yeah. So how are you going to rate this leather fragrance from Philip Klein? Uh, eight. Eight, pretty good. Yeah. So Philip Klein, no limit, got an eight. Next up, we have Dior Sauvage mm. Elixir, which yes. I bought in London. I'm gonna link to my review of elixir above how do yeah. you feel about this one i really like the edt but this has everything that i miss in the edt i mm. think this one is amazing it's classy sexy masculine uh very spicy sweet uh, i think all women will love this on you mm. yeah. so for me a nine a nine, yeah. pretty good, almost a almost perfect Almost a rhythm. ten, but a nine. Next up we have Killian Back to mm. Black. 
This one is a, a perfume pretty much drenched in honey. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I do pick up other notes as well, yeah. but the honey is so dominant in this one. This yes. is a sweet honey perfume. But it has something, it's like honey with some perfect floral combination. Mm. Um, so I'm not always into honey in fragrances because I think it can sort of take over. Yeah. This is honey drenched, like mm. you said, but but the flowers balances it up in a good way, so it gets very good. Mm -hmm. um, this is. What are you gonna give this one from one to this ten? This is not uh, a sexy kind of fragrance. Mm -hmm. This is more of a beautiful, classic kind mm -hmm. of fragrance. Maybe going to work or on the on a date, the first date mm. where Ooh. you're not supposed to have sex. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because it's not a sexy one. Ah, okay. <laughs> this okay. is a good guy one. <laughs> ah, okay. So if you are looking for a one night stand, you shouldn't put this one. No. Ah, okay. Okay. <laughs> so it's an eight. Eight. Pretty good. Yeah. Moving on. Next up, we have Killian uh, Good Girl Gone Bad. And no, yes. it's not the same atomizer. <laughs> I bought uh, a few of these because I think they are so beautiful. Yeah. So. This is a very feminine fragrance mm. that is incredibly sexy on a man. Mm. Yeah. This is, I think, one of the best from Killian. And I'm actually quite irritated that you bought it mm -hmm. for me because mm. now I feel like I can't buy it because you have it. This is one of those that um, grew on me. We did a um, first impression on Killian. And this is one of those that I just couldn't stop thinking about. And yeah. then I spent months away from all the Killians and I decided, okay, I really want a Killian now. So I revisited them one by one, tried them out, and this one just, just stood out. I just had to have yeah. this one. This is so good. So huh? this is a beautiful, cool floral. And it's like, <clears throat> it's floral, it's uh, fruit, a little bit fruity sweet, and it has a, like a lipstick mm. note to it, and that's really nice. Yeah, there are definitely, de definitely more nuances to it than just florals. There's something yeah. else in it. Yeah. So how are you going to rate a Good Girl Gone Bad from Killian? I think this is a 10. 10? Yes. Whoa! Yeah, I said this is going Whoa. to be like the best of the best. And that makes me so happy to hear. And I can't remember, I believe it was in my uh, top uh, attention grabbing uh, video that I ranked, uh, that I had this one in. Yeah. Uh, if I find it, I'm gonna link to it above. So please do make sure you check that one out after you're done with this video. But yeah, this was a perfect rebel. So before we continue, I would like to ask you uh, to like this video. It doesn't cost you anything, but it truly helps me out. Thanks. Next up, we have Kirke from Tiziana okay. Terenzi. This is uh, a perfume that I bought because I was basically looking for something that was a bit like Pulp or Space Rage from Byredo. Uh, and I'm so happy that this one is, it still has that sort of a ripe fruit vibe or fruity vibe, but it's not the same as Space Rage or Pulp. No. But and, I get what you mean. And I was just so surprised when I got this one because it just blew me away. There's something about it that I absolutely love. And I believe that you, um, first, your first impression was like, oh, wow, this yeah. is cool. But then a few days ago, you told me that there was something about it that you didn't like. Yeah, uh, the thing about it is that when, I st when I'm standing here smelling it, I once again love it, but then there is something with some like burnt note in mm -hmm. it uh, that mm -hmm. puts me off. Uh, so one moment I think it smells amazing and uh, my daughter complimented me mm -hmm. the first thing she did when she smelled this on me. Mm. Uh, and I do like it, but um, sometimes it just puts me off mm -hmm. and I get sort of nauseous. No. Yeah, so how are you going to rate the Kirke from Tiziana Terenzi? This is so hard. So the good notes uh, or the good side of it gets like an eight or a nine, mm -hmm. but the bad side gets like five or six. Okay. But we can't rate size in one. So uh, is it just, is it good or bad? One to 10. 
It's a seven. Seven. Yeah. Ah, okay. And do you feel that it's uh, just for men or is it for women as no, well? No, for women as well. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Cool. So that was uh, uh, Kirke from Tiziana Terenzi, and it received a seven. Last but not least, we have ombre leather parfum yes. from Tom Ford. Now we are talking. This is so good. Mm. So I absolutely, I mean, the original, uh, my friends know that if there's one perfume that makes me go insane, it's uh, the original ombre leather. I love when it, when it comes to fall and winter time, when I put that one on and then put on a scarf, uh, because the next day when I try that one again, ombre leather is on it. Yeah. And the scent is magnificent. There's something about the original that I just love, but this one sort of has the same decor DNA as the original. Yeah. But there's a twist to it and the floral side, which is not super prominent, but it's still there, is yeah. changed in this one. Yeah. So there is a difference. And to me, there's uh, another difference in that this one has a more sort of a prominent woody and smoky side to the leather. So even though the core leather is the same, it is also a bit different. Yeah. I would say... Most noses <clears throat> though are not gonna notice a difference from these, from the no, original. No, they are quite similar, but I would say that the original ombre leather is more bad boyish, mm. and this is a little bit more dressed up. Um, mm, so that's pretty if good you description. Might want, I mean, the, the original, original ombre leather is more of a leather jacket fragrance and this is more of a dressed up suit mm. fragrance uh, but i love them both i think they are both amazing and mm. so what yeah. are you going to give this um of course a 10. whoa yeah. nice. maybe 11 or 12. wow okay yeah. <laughs> okay cool so this is going to be really hard because i am going to ask you to choose just oh, one. No. And the reason why I know that this is going to be really hard is because these are so different from each other. We have the beautiful leather of Ombre Leather Parfum. We have the unique creation of Paco Rabanne's Dandy Me. And then we have the floral beauty of a good girl gone bad. So we have three very different ones. But I'm gonna ask you this. If you had, or maybe you have uh, a boyfriend uh, and you would buy him one of these. Yeah. I want you to pick one of these and tell me why. Okay. So, um, I would go with the one that is most masculine for me. So mm -hmm. even if I love the floral feminine fragrances on a man that can feel so sexy, I want the safeness, the warmth, the comfort of a real man. Mm -hmm. And then we need mm -hmm. to go for the deeper, darker one with leather and wow. something like So you actually chose deeper. Tom Ford above Dan Demi. Yes, I did. So out of these, you want your man uh, to smell like Tom Ford Ombre Leather Parfum. Yes, please. That is interesting. And this was a lot of fun. It Thank was. you for coming over and ranking some of my latest uh, perfume purchases. Uh, you guys are going to uh, be able to enjoy new uh, fragrance hauls quite soon. Yes. Uh, now, before you leave, please do make sure that you hit that like. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe and make sure you head on over to Sandra Solomon Fragrance. Don't forget to hit her notification <laughs> bell as well and that subscribe and make sure you pop a message to her, yeah. like a comment and say hello I as well. I love those comments. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.